I am Brian Zipsy, and as always, I have the great pleasure of being joined by my co-host to the East Coast, Matt's Matt Shipman. How are you today, Matt? I am good, Brady, uh, Brian. Well, maybe I'm not, but uh, I am good, Brian. But I am ready for an Ohio edition of Horse Center. Let's get all Ohio on the audience, Matt. We're talking thistle down. Both of us have enjoyed that racetrack over the years. And this is their signature uh, race card of the year, Matt. Not only the Ohio Derby, but they have the $250,000 Lady Jacqueline and several other stakes at uh, Thistledown up there near Cleveland, Ohio. So let's jump right in. And if we're going to jump into the Ohio Derby, Matt, I think we have to put this young man front and center. It's two fills fresh off a really strong performance matt in the uh, kentucky derby the only horse who was close to that fast early pace in the derby that stuck around in fact he opened up early in the stretch and had to be run down by mage a very good performance in the kentucky derby yes it certainly was brian <clears throat> and i guess it's easy to forget about that considering we've gone through the preakness and the belmont stakes and i guess you know five, six weeks has passed since then, but uh, yeah, that was a very noteworthy performance by two fills. Uh, uh, being part of that pace, dealing with that pace, watching all of those other uh, front runners drift to the back of the field go across the finish line, and uh, he looked like a winner for a while, but Mage got a perfect, perfect trip to win the Derby. Yeah, Mage did, and Mage is a, a, a nice horse as well but uh, hey i'm a little biased i'm gonna i'm gonna state that early matt because i really like two fills after the scratches in the kentucky derby he became my top choice couldn't have been uh, uh happier unless he won maybe but i was very happy with his performance in the kentucky derby without further ado let's get a look at the field here let's take a look at this ohio derby we got eight horses matt but i think it's a it's a nice bunch and we got horses coming from different places two fills seven weeks ago Kentucky Derby. Uh, Lord Miles, I guess it's been 11 weeks since he pulled a pretty big upset in the grade two Wood Memorial, nosing out a uh, uh, hit show who ran pretty well in both the Derby and the Belmont after that. Lord Miles, of course, was not allowed to run that in the Kentucky Derby because of the uh, uh, ban of Safi jo Joseph horses that uh, by Churchill Downs for the Derby after uh, a couple of unfortunate Horses passing the week before the Derby for Safi Joseph. So Lord Miles, the son of Curlin, still lightly raced. He's back. Bishop's Bay, even more lightly raced, uh, coming off a bang-up performance in the Peter Pan that was since flattered when Archangelo won. So this is a nice little field, Matt. Let's uh, let's talk a little bit more about the race favor. Two fills is going to break from the four hole. Uh, the reason he became my top choice after the scratches in the Kentucky Derby is a really strong performance at Turfway Park in the Jeff Ruby Stakes. Yeah, two fills uh, came into the Derby uh, with that grade three win in the Jeff Ruby. He had a grade, uh, uh, grade three win earlier uh, in his career in the street sense at Churchill Downs. So he was a winner on the track and, and uh, every race that he's been in, he's been game going down to the wire and there wasn't any reason to expect him to do run any differently. And that's what he did. Yeah. The, the Jeff Ruby, I thought was a coming out because yeah, he was a two time stakes winner as a two year old, once at Churchill, once up in Minnesota, he broke his maiden in Virginia. Uh, he ran pretty well down in new Orleans this year without a win mm -hmm. in his first two starts of the year. Uh, so uh, a good, uh, a really nice horse who took it up a notch in the Jeff Ruby stakes, uh, winning off for fun over a very nice horse and major dude. And then he came back with that bang up performance in the Kentucky Derby. Matt, I also think he's versatile. Uh, he can be close to the pace or he can be a little farther out of it. He's also working very well at Hawthorne Park since uh, running in the Kentucky, so, uh, Kentucky Derby. So two fills will be the favorite and the horse to beat. But I think we should talk about the three horses well, Bishop's Bay, because Bishop's Bay you know, he, he's only had three races, but that maiden and allowance win, he beat some nice horses in both. Uh, he's proven tough. He's proven game. I guess he did all of that in the Peter Pan, nine furlongs, 
that was one turn at Belmont Park. But the horse he gave everything to in that Peter Pan, Archangelo, of course, came back and won the Belmont Stakes a few weeks later. Yeah. Uh, no knocks on, on Bishop's Bay, except that, you know, he doesn't have a stakes win yet. And, you know, he's a three-year-old in the Brad Cox barn. And quite frankly, Brian, we know what three-year-olds in the Brad Cox barn are supposed to do. They're supposed to win stakes races. Yeah, Brad Cox, certainly one of the best trainers in America these days. And he's had good three-year-olds, a lot of good three-year-olds in the last several years. He's got Angel of Empire, of course, who was a, a fast-closing third just behind two fills in the Kentucky Derby. But Bishop Spey really looks like he could be any kind off his first three starts. We also look at the U.S. Uh, uh, Timeform U.S. pace projector, Matt, and there's not a ton of speed in this race. In fact, they are putting the two favorites there at the top. And I'm going to disagree with that a little bit because I think the one horse, Henry Q, breaking from the rail is, is going to show speed in this nine furlong, half a million dollar Ohio Derby. Yeah, I guess uh, he's got a chance to, to be part of the pace, maybe the pace setter from the rail. I, I don't know. I think that setting him to the lead would be a good option for him to uh, have a shot in the race. Henry Q coming from the West Coast has traveled a lot from the West Coast already in his career, actually, since the very beginning of his career when uh, uh, he broke his maiden. Aside from that, he's traveled. He went to Sunland Park, won the Mind That Bird Derby, then was third in the Sunland Derby on the Kentucky Derby Trail. <clears throat> he also uh, traveled to New York and was in that Peter Pan. He finished third, but a pretty distant third. Yeah, he looked like he was a uh, a bit of a contender, actually, Matt, in the Peter Pan at the head of the stretch. But then uh, Bishop's Bay and Archangelo left him uh, kind of in the dust, uh, as you say, a well-beaten third in that Peter Pan. But I think, I think the tactics will be different this time because he's one on the lead, breaking from the rail, and it really looks like Henry Q and Bishop's Bay are the main speed out of all eight of these. I, I think two fills is more likely to sit third or fourth. Not too far behind. He doesn't want to fall too far behind Bishop's Bay in the Ohio Derby. But I think the distance uh, might play to the advantage of two fills. Nine furlongs, if it was a little shorter, I think Bishop's Bay and maybe Henry Q could be even tougher in this Ohio Derby. Uh, 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 let's talk about the outside horses too, Matt, because we talked about the horses who probably will be close to the lead already in, in Bishop's Bay and, and Henry Q and two fills not far behind. But then you look on the outside and you see Lord Miles farther back for sure, certainly. And then farther back than that is uh, Hayes Strike. Two nice horses. We talked about uh, Lord Miles just a bit already with that Wood Memorial win. Now he was big odds, 59 to 1 in New York, Matt. I'm not sure he should have been 59 to 1. It's easy to say after the yeah. fact. But I saw some good performances in his career and a little bit of trouble and some potential in his first four races. And then he put it all together in that Wood Memorial. Yes, he did, Brian. And, you know, you've heard me say this before on the show that uh, it's pretty unusual when a horse comes back and duplicates a victory after being a big, big, long shot winner like uh, Lord Miles was in the Wood Memorial. And now on top of it, you put a... Uh, uh, what's getting to be a pretty long layoff since the Wood Memorial. I don't know where, I think we're up around like 11 weeks or something like that, but but a pretty hefty uh, uh, layoff since then combined with that, you know, long shot victory makes it hard to expect uh, Lord Miles to be on the top of his game again. Yeah, I think Safi Joseph does a pretty good job with horses, uh, uh, getting them ready for big races. And I, I will agree with most everything you said there. When you see a horse win at big, big odds in a, in, in a pretty big race, they seldom come back and repeat that effort again. But on the other hand, the, the, the caveat or, or, or the uh, outlier there might be horses who are uh, lightly raced and and have that potential to be very good. And that could be Lord Miles. You see on the morning line here, I'm not quite buying that he's going to be really close to Bishop's Bay and Bishop's Bay is going to only be three to one and two fills is only going to be eight to five. I think 
both of them could be lower and then we'll see a bigger gap to the next wave which could be led by lord miles but would include henry q and then hayes strike now hayes strike is an interesting horse man he's run a lot of good races he was second as a two-year-old to two fills uh on an off track at churchill downs albeit a distant second but uh, on his uh on his best he can rally and he can win stakes and we've seen him do that in two of the last three races yeah, <clears throat> two of the last three races for trainer Kenny McPeak. And we know uh, McPeak is a trainer who, when his horses are in good form, he does not hesitate to run him, run them. And that's exactly what has been happening with Hayes Strike, who uh, uh, three races back was a winner of the private terms uh, in Maryland, sort of one of the prep races that they put on the track there for uh, for the Preakness, and then most recently was a winner of the Texas Derby at Lone Star. Yeah, both the private terms uh, in Maryland and the Texas Derby in Texas. Uh, he uh, rallied nicely to win those stakes races over decent fields, but I, uh, of course this will be a tougher spot. Again, as we look at that pace projection, he is the one that they expect to be trailing early, so it'll be Hayes Strike looking to pick up the pieces as they roll down the lane, Matt. Uh, there's three other horses we haven't mentioned, and Times of Tappan, Agnello's Dream, and Last Cookie are all local horses, Matt. And unlike some races where I give the local horses a real look, I don't know that I can recommend their chances, any one of those three in this Ohio Derby. I agree with you, Brian, because these local horses, uh, for the most part, have only run uh, at Mahoning Valley or Thistledown, the two tracks in Ohio. And more significantly to go along with that is that they are basically uh, first level kind of allowance horses. Yeah, yeah. The, the class level they're running, even though in you know, those smaller Ohio tracks, is just not looking really good. Like, hey, maybe they could step up here and run a big race. So it should be the top five that we get focused on in the Ohio Derby. Two fills leading the way, but uh, four decent challengers for him as he returns in the Ohio Derby. And the Ohio Derby is a, a stepping stone for him and maybe others to big grade one million dollar races like the Haskell and the Travers as we really get into the summertime here, Matt. All right, so we're talking thistle down. We're not done with the Ohio Derby though, Matt, with just the Ohio Derby. We're talking more. We're gonna go to the Lady Jacqueline. And that uh, quarter million dollar race has uh, attracted some good horses in recent years. And uh, I would say this year is no different. A field of 12 are set for this one. Also at nine furlongs at Thistledown on Saturday, Matt. We'll, we'll start with the favorite. And again, I think the morning line probably a little bit uh, uh, light on how low the favorite's going to be. Because I, I looked at this field and I thought it, Interstate Daydream, a three-time stakes winner, is going to be under seven to two in here. I, I think so, Brian. You know, I guess, you know, I guess with 12 horses in there, that makes it a little bit tougher to get to be a real short favorite. But, you know, we're talking about, you know, a similarity between the Lady Jacqueline and the Ohio Derby is in that, you know, there's a handful of Ohio horses that probably don't have too much of a chance. And then horses coming in from out of town that have a, a class advantage. But, if you look at the PPs, um, uh, Interstate Dream uh, really seems to have an edge over most of this field. And even though it's big, I think he, I think she's going to be uh, uh, maybe closer to five to two. Yeah, I would even say lower than that. Matt would be my guess. Interstate Daydream is the class of the field, and she's the filly to beat. She's coming off a stakes win. A uh, game win in the uh, DuPont at Pimlico last time on Preakness weekend, uh, but she was a uh, won a couple of graded stakes last year as a three-year-old, trained by Brad Cox, ridden by Florence Giroux, Interstate Daydream, certainly a nice mare. I will caution people that want to jump on the favorite though, Matt, because there is quite a bit of speed. If we look at the time form U.S. pace projector, they are staying fast pace, and as I handicapped the race, I came up with the same assumption this will be a fast and contested early pace i think they got the 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 philly with the most speed secret fix right or the mare with the most speed she's fast and i think she'll be on the lead but then we could talk about the three red hot last a local philly 
the 10, Candy Island, a local Philly, but also Interstate Daydream, the favorite, and 63 caliber, who could be the second choice. I do think there'll be a gap again between Interstate Daydream and anybody else on the odds board, but uh, 63 caliber could be the second choice in here. And she's done her best racing pretty close to the early lead as well. So it should be a solid early pace here, Matt. Let's talk about 63 caliber a little bit because her biggest win to date came in your neck of the woods back at uh, Aqueduct last fall. Yeah. Back in Aqueduct at the Con in the Conley stakes, uh, uh, in, uh, uh, earlier, earlier in her career. Um, but since then, uh, she has run well uh, for trainer Tom Amos, who we know does a pretty good job with uh, with fillies. And this is another one that seems to be coming around into form. Most recently was second in the Shawnee Stakes, uh, which is a grade three at Churchill Downs. Um, uh, had a, you know, uh, an unimpressive performance in the La Troyenne which is a grade one, but uh, that's not this kind of field. No, no, but I, I, th I, do, I do think this Lady Jacqueline is more than a listed stakes. I mean, a quarter million dollars would kind of put it in the graded st stakes category. And I think uh, Interstate Daydream and then several of her top challengers would make this more like a grade two or a grade three on Saturday. And, and we have to see if 63 caliber. By the way, I want to ask you a serious question, Matt. I've, for years, I've said the comely and you probably would be a better uh, expert on aqueduct racing. Is it, you're saying the comely? Well, I, you know, typically I have said the, the comely also, but I have heard the uh, more experts at New York on the Fox show uh, and have heard them say the comely. All right. Well, there you go. I, I'm still learning at my advanced age. So that's, that's good. So we'll call it the comely. That's going to be hard for me to say uh, after all the years of calling it the comely. 63 caliber. She hasn't won since the comely win. She's 0 for 3, but that last one, that second in the Shawnee at Churchill Downs, kind of points out that she's getting back into good form for trainer Tom Amos. But as I said, she is another one who likes to be pretty close to that early lead. As we look at some of the other top challengers, though, I think there are some ralliers here. We could go to the two, uh, La Davida, because La Davida certainly is a, a mare that likes to rally. She came from Chile, where she was a stakes winner in her native land. Uh, but she is kind of been knocking on the door. She won her first two in America in allowance company, but she's been knocking on the door of late. And we, we look at that DuPont. There were three horses uh, within a length at the wire, and she was the one that was rallying the most to be third, beaten just a length by Interstate Daydream. Yeah, absolutely, Brian. Uh, um, and uh, she does seem to be coming into form. That was uh, a really good performance. She was fifth in the Aziri and third in the Bayakoa at Oak Lawn Park uh, uh, late in the winter, early in the spring for a very good trainer in Nacho Correas. Yeah. And it, again, if we're coming back to this projected pace that I think we agree with Time Form U.S., uh, coming from off the pace might not be a bad thing. And, and there we see La Vida pretty far back, the number four, way, way back, actually. But uh, again, if it's a fast, contested pace, that could be a good spot to be. Not far in front of her is Misty Vale, who was not far in front of her in that DuPont behind Interstate Daydream. In fact, Misty Vale looked like she was going to get by Interstate Daydream for a while in the stretch, but Interstate Daydream gamely held her off. She was beaten half a length. Misty Vale is an interesting horse in that she was claimed less than a year ago by Mike Maker, and I think she's rounding into form. Yeah, for Mike Maker, who uh, is known for claiming horses for pretty high tags and then doing good things with him. And I just want to em emphasize something that I think you uh, uh, mentioned a little bit about this race. And if we combine the fact that this is a mile and an eighth race, for three-year-old fillies when there is a fast pace. Uh, um, that's going to make it hard for uh, a, a bunch of horses in here to get the nine furlongs, and that's also could be a big factor, the nine furlongs, that favors the horses coming off the pace. Yeah, I agree. I agree with everything except it, it, these are older fillies. 
but uh, oh, nine furlongs, cool. right? Nine furlongs uh, with a fast pace at Thistletown. Yes, what you said is true. And that's why, frankly, I'm looking at horses to rally here. Misty Vale is very interesting. Uh, $80,000 claim. She is getting better and better of late for trainer Mike Maker. As you said, Mike Maker is a master at uh, claiming, high price claiming horses and turning them into graded stakes horses. I also think Misty Vale, not only can she rally and is getting better, but I also think the daughter of Tunnelist wants to go at least nine furlongs. I think nine furlongs is a good distance for her. So she becomes very interesting uh, as another good challenger for interstate daydream. We mentioned Secret Fix. She can run very fast and she can win by a lot when she's left alone on the lead. I, I just don't expect her in any shape or form to be alone on the lead for too long here. Yeah, I agree, Brian. Yeah, Secret Fix uh, got a prep race over Thistledown and won by a pole. But now she faces the good mares. One other horse I for sure want to talk about, and, and this is completely different than the Ohio Derby in that I quickly dismissed the local horses. Uh, there are a few in here that I think would rate a, a, a chance, but certainly Candlelight Hours match. She is a nice Ohio mare, and she has been running going back and forth between one turn and two turns, and she just turns in really good performances. She's probably never been better. She's won two straight over the track at Thistledown. Yes, and she's won uh, allowance, against, allowance against Open Company, but she's also a state-bred stakes winner. And just, just take a look at her career record of 16 starts, seven wins, four seconds, three-thirds only once not in the top three. Yeah, Candlelight Hours is a nice mare, a legitimate mare that deserves a shot in Thistletown's uh, signature race for fillies and mares. I just worry that it's probably coming up a little bit harder than she wants with, with mares like Interstate Daydream and the rest in here. All right, Matt, so we're talking about a, a probably a moderate pace where Bishop's Bay could uh, get out there a little bit. Maybe Henry Q is the one to worry about there, but then we go to a what looks like a hot pace in the Lady Jacqueline. So two interesting races to handicap. I think two certain favorites and two fills in the Ohio Derby and then Interstate Daydream uh, in the Lady Jacqueline. Uh, are they beatable, Matt? It's it's time for us to make our top picks in these two races and, and see if we can't beat the favorites. I'll let you start, sir, with the Ohio Derby first. Ohio Derby. Um, hey, Brian, two fills on that uh, Kentucky Derby performance, the Jeff Ruby uh, grade three winner seems to have an advantage over this field that is significant in what he has done and who he has run against class and performance. He's going to be tough to beat Brian. We've both have liked to fills uh, uh, throughout his career, but I'm going to take a little shot against them uh, just because of price. Uh, two fills could get bet an awful lot. I'm going to take a shot with Bishop's Bay and from the Brad Cox barn running just ahead behind Archangelo, who looked so good winning the Belmont Stakes. Who knows? I think he'll have to take a step forward to be to beat two fills, but I think he's got a chance to take a step forward. Yeah, I, I agree with you. And uh, Bishop's Bay is a live horse here. The one thing that I don't love, uh, even though he ran nine furlongs and he did it well in the Peter Pan, is this, this is a little bit different in that sort of two-turn nine furlongs at Thistledown. Um, it, it, if Henry, if I wasn't pretty confident that Henry Q is going to show pretty good speed and, and be a horse that can stick around for a while, I, I probably would like Bishop's Bay even more. Or... If this race was a mile or a mile of 16th, I'd probably like Bishop's Bay more as well. I think he's a clear second choice in here. And I just think the nine furlongs will eventually get him beat in the Ohio Derby by the horse that I think is one of the best three-year-olds in the country, no doubt about it, two fills. So I love the way he's working at Hawthorne. He's the favorite, but I like him best. I will use two fills and Bishop's Bay in the top two spots in trifectas that I'll bet. And I'll try to get one of the two ralliers, Hayes Strike and Lord Miles into the triple because I think Henry Q eventually will fold under the pressure of Bishop's Bay. Matt, what about the Lady Jacqueline? 
Lady Jacqueline. Also, um, I'm going to take a shot against the uh, uh, against the favorite um, with the big field. I am hoping that 63 cali caliber is maybe a little bit farther back, uh, and I wouldn't be upset about that. I want to see uh, 63 calibers. Uh, uh, connections. I want to see Tom Amos telling his rider to let, let's let's let those let the speed go and find a nice stride in a stalking position where I think uh, she can make a move and get the win. Yeah, yeah. And if Interstate Daydream is softened by the fast pace and the Lady Jacqueline, then all of her top challengers, including 63 caliber, become. A bigger threat to upset interstate daydream in the lady jacqueline and i'm picking an upset as well i'm looking for a horse though to come from a little farther off it misty Vale is actually the second choice on the morning line i'm not buying it i think she'll be a uh, good value in here i think she'll i think she'll be six to one or higher uh coming off her long shot second last time in the dupont i i really do think interstate daydream will be bet pretty heavily as the favorite in this big field so matt and i agree on trying to beat interstate daydream I'm going for the Mike Maker, the improving Mike Maker claim, Misty Vale. That gives me, by the way, Matt, that gives me Jareth Loveberry, one of my favorite jockeys. He, uh, he's my top pick in both of these races. So hopefully Loveberry gets it done in Ohio for me. Loveberry uh, uh, for Brian Zipsy uh, in, the, in the Daily Double. Yeah, there you go. And you can bet a Daily Double. These are consecutive races. Uh, Lady Jacqueline first and the Ohio Derby after at Thistle Down on Saturday. All right, Matt, that's our show. It's nice to uh, focus on a, a slightly smaller track every once in a while at Horse Center, and hopefully uh, the the uh, viewers out there enjoyed our look at these two big races at Thistle Down. Can I get a party shot from you, my friend? Absolutely, uh, Horse Center fans. I will not be at Thistle Down uh, this weekend, although I would love to be. At Thistle Down this weekend. It's been a long time. It's been since college since oh, I've wow. been there. Oh wow. I've, I've been there more recently. I've been to Ohio Ohio Derby's more recently, but I won't be there either. I just got back from Orlando, Florida an hour ago watching the national uh volleyball tournament where my daughter competed. So that was fun. Anyway, thanks as always for watching Horse Center. We really do appreciate you watching every week. If you haven't yet subscribed. Uh, please do so. Hit the notifications. Leave us a comment. Uh, do all of the above. We love it. It helps Matt and I out. And uh, we've been getting a lot of nice com comments on here lately. And we, we we greatly appreciate it. Also, thanks to our, our friend and helper in the home office for the race graphics. That's Candace Curtis, the best in the business. Derby Wars is our sponsor, the, uh, the best contest site out there, Matt. And then, of course, for Time Form US for their great pace projections. Easy for me to say that we use every week here on Horse Center. We'll be back next week. We're talking about a big day of racing at Ellis Park, led by the Stephen Foster next week. So you don't want to miss that show. For now, have a great weekend. Good luck at the races. Matt and I will see you next week.